YouTube. This is a remake of a video I made earlier. I uh, got a great tip from Cloud Hopping, thank you very much, on using a uh, desktop recording program. Uh, I found Camtasia and it works great. So, um, so here goes. Um, the four utilities I, I use um, are EVGA Precision, GPUs, CPUs, and SpeedFan. Now, GPUs really doesn't have too much to do with your video card, but it does give you uh, your core speed, you know, how, your volts, and you know, basically how your computer is, how fast it's running, and all the information about your processor, motherboard, your RAM, uh, graphics, you know, all that nice stuff. Um, GPUs gives you all the information on your video card. Uh, you can, if you have different ones, let's say you have one that's not a, a plus, not an overclocked one, just a regular GTX, it'll give you the stats in here. So, you know, you know the default settings, so when you go into here and like, okay, let's say this one's not overclocked, uh, but the top one is, I would click onto here and I would adjust it because these numbers would be different as you click through. So, but anyways, um, if you are running an SLI setup, this uh, sync uh, button here is really important. It locks up all your, it doesn't lock them up, it syncs up all your cards. So when you adjust these sliders here, um, it all, it, it takes effect on all your video cards. So when I began overclocking, um, I, you know, did my search on uh, on Google, and you know, I, I punched in my video card, and and I got you know some some numbers that other people were using. Now, I first found out when I was punching in the numbers they were using, it would crash. So I don't know if they like actually like you know I could set this to like, bam, you know. <laughs> core clock of you know 1220 and uh, but it's not necessarily going to run at that so you know you can set it to whatever the heck you want but through benchmarking and testing that's how you you know you gain stability so when you're searching your card online whatever they put down don't overclock to that number overclock like let's say if it was 830 I overclock to 817, you know, and that's kind of like a safe bet that it'll overclock. So when I started overclocking, um, I did my core clock first until it wouldn't, um, you know, I until it was stable, right? So I left my shader and my memory alone. I, I overclocked my core, ran my tests, then I started working on the shader. And when the shader started crashing, that's when I'd bring it, when it started crashing, I knew it was my shader that was crashing it, so I'd slowly bring it down a bit. And I did the same with my memory. Once these two were stable, and my memory was at default, then I, I was able to play with my memory clock. Now, I brought it down a little bit more than what I was able to achieve. My numbers were a little higher, but I mean, the card stock is at like, the core clock is around like, I think six, 35 or 650 or something like that. Now my XFX is 760. So it's a factory overclock and now I overclocked over top of the factory overclock. So you know I don't really want to kill my cards. I've seen some videos on YouTube where guys just overclock the crap out of them and it they destroy their cards. So I really didn't want to do that but I didn't want to get as much performance as I could. Uh, Another very important thing about uh, EVGA Precision or any type of uh, video card um, overclocking utility is your fan speed. Uh, by default, my 9800 was at 30%. And at 30%, it would sit there at 60 degrees idle. Like right now, these are idle. Obviously, it's not really doing too much. And uh, it's below 50, which is really nice. So you know, typically, I leave it at 70 like even when I'm gaming because I mean if at default it sits at 60 when I game it increases 10 degrees each one increases 10 degrees so I'm maybe hitting 60 you know uh, or a high 50s and I found that 70 percent you get that uh, that nice balance between noise and performance 
because at 100%, sure, the cards run cool and whatnot, but you're going to go slightly deaf from having three cards or even two cards whizzing away at 100%. So I like to keep it at 70. 80 isn't too bad, um, but you don't see that much of a performance increase or sorry, a cooling increase. So um, yeah, be careful when you're overclocking. It's, it's not that dangerous because right now you're just setting um, like the core clock, the shader and the memory with the default voltage settings, which like, you know, it, it's, that's the way it's hooked up. When you actually, when you start messing with your voltages, that's when you can get higher core speeds and memory shaders and uh, memory and, and shaders. So it's, you know, don't be too afraid that you're going to fry your card out, you know, just by, over, you know, overclocking. So, um, you know, be careful, do your research, look your card up and, um, and have fun. Uh, thanks for watching my video.